Hey y'all, Half Mile Sniper here, and today we are going to talk about the wicked weather we had in Raton during the Rocky Mountain Nationals. So, y'all sit back, kick your feet up, enjoy the ride. Alrighty, so we started off with not too bad of weather. It was a little bit hotter than normal. It was a whole lot more humid than normal. And uh, and uh, even the boys from Mississippi agreed that the weather felt like it was Gulf Coast weather. It was high temperatures and high humidity. Not typically what we would have up there in the mountains. Yes, we would have afternoon thunder showers because it's monsoon season but we really didn't feel humidity so we had that uh high temps and high humidity for the first couple of days then we had some wind blow through and uh that was interesting because one good gust of wind ripped all the targets out of the target frames and we had to start all over again fortunately that was a practice day then we get to our first match day and uh Mid-match, we had some light rain, just enough to make you feel wet, but not soaking wet. It was more of a, more of just a sprinkle. That is until about 9 o'clock at night. Well, we'd gone to dinner, we were coming back, and we saw Thunderhead's building, and uh, I'll try to put a picture of that in right here for you. So we get back to the uh, back to the cabin. I fire up the computer to do some work, and the phones start going off with severe thunderstorm alert, heavy rain, softball-sized hail, thunder, lightning, etc. And then no sooner did that alert come in, and this huge crack of lightning went, and immediately we lost power. And we lost power for 24 hours. In fact, the next day, they had to bring in a generator to run the range because there was no power to turn the targets or run the PA system. So we had no, no electric, no lights, no nothing. It's, let me tell you, in the mountains in New Mexico, away from town, it is very dark when there's no light. It was like being in a sealed box trying to... <laughs> walk across the room with your hands out in front of you not knowing where the wall was going to be pretty interesting and of course then one of the funny thing funny moments here it is it's pitch black the only light we do have is the the light illuminating from the, the lightning strikes which were coming fast and furious <laughs> I go to the window and I open up the blinds and I'm looking out the window watching the water flowing down the uh, the hillside <laughs> right there by the cabin in the light from the lightning. And then I thought to myself, dummy, why are you standing in front of the window if there's supposed to be softball-sized hail? <laughs> yeah, that could have been ugly. So, closed the blinds, moved away from the window, and called it a night, went to bed early. And then, well... The uh, the afternoon storms were then keeping me from getting to go to shoot the buffalo. I did go one day with one of my uh, one of the competitors. They wanted me to go up with their granddaughter to show her how to shoot the buffalo using their gun. It was a Remington 700 left hand bolt. I did not bring the camera with me because well I didn't feel like putting other people on on video. And it had a loophole. MOA scope. So first we went to the sight end range. The owner shot the gun, verified the gun was zeroed. Then we ran over to the Buffalo range. I did the math, said, oh, it needs 34 MOA up. And I start, I looked at the turrets and they were 15 MOA 
per turn. Cool. I need two full turns and four four MOA. One, and it stops short of two. Probably 28-ish, maybe. Maybe 29. And I'm like, dang it. And I look through the scope, and I see the subtenants down there, and I ask the owner, said, what's the dimensions on your subtenants? I don't know. Well, crap. I go, I'm going to make a I'm going to make a command uh, guess here or command decision and guess that the subtenants are one MOA per hash mark. So if I go to the top of the shoulder with the crosshair, and I know I need five MOA, well let's go to the last subtenant and put that right across the top of the shoulder. Let's see what happens. So I'll take I'll take one shot and see if my guess is right. Boom. Bing. And there were some people shooting the 500 yard uh, turkeys, I think they were. And uh, they're like, oh, that was so cool. How did you do that? Because they came over. They thought it was just the neatest thing that I could do that. And then I told a uh, told the granddaughter or the competitor's granddaughter. So, okay, here's how you want to hold it. Put the crosshairs, the, look, at, look at your crosshairs, look at the hash marks below the crosshairs, the last one, put that right across the top of the shoulder, center of the buffalo, squeeze the trigger, and you'll get a hit. And sure enough, she got a first round hit too. So felt good about that, but just didn't get it on video. And then because of the afternoon monsoons, I did not get to go to the buffalo the rest of the we week. We get the last day, we're shooting it. I made a horrible error in my sight adjustment on my distinguished revolver. Instead of going two full turns down for the 50-yard line, for some reason, I went two full turns up. Instead of putting 24 rounds in the 10 ring, I put 24 rounds in the head, took myself right out of the running, and felt really bad, but thankfully I'm already distinguished, so it's not like I was fighting for any points. It's still just the stupidest of mistakes can take you out of it, any running. We go home, we get cleaned up to go to the banquet, and I decide right then and there, I'm putting the 6.5 in the truck because after the banquet, we'll go shoot the buffalo. It'll still be daylight. It'll just be an evening shot. This will work out. We get to the end of the banquet and lo and behold, it starts raining. And then it starts to hail. And here's what it looked like from the banquet hall. Well, we got some gigantic hail coming down. Wow. Yep, the hail's getting bigger. It's beating onto the truck. And then if you look like right here in the cowling, you can see where it punched a hole through. Well, now we can't go shoot the buffalo because, well, it's hailing. And we tried to get back to the cabin, and this is what we had to drive through. Holy cow, we are being shot at by the clouds. That is some serious hail. Holy smoke. We're going to lose the windshield. was some of the most hellacious hail I have ever been through. I knew for sure we were going to lose a windshield. Fortunately, I got an old truck, so it's heavy heavy metal. 
but lots of people got lots of dents. In fact, one of my teammates has almost $10,000 worth of hail damage on his car. And then here's a picture of hail from the, from the ground right at the cabin. Alrighty, all this half mile sniper reminding y'all, stay strapped or get clapped. Carry everywhere you can. Get a CCW if you need one. If you're in a constitutional carry state, no reason not to be carrying, but I'd get a CCW anyways. You never know, you might travel. I really appreciate y'all hanging with me and hanging out in the premieres and chatting and liking and subscribing. And we're north of 2,600 subscribers now. I like that. And once again, congratulations to Dale Pogue, the big winner of the uh, scope giveaway not too long ago. Use it in good health, Dale. Reach out and touch something. So until next time, this will be Half Mile Sniper reminding y'all, stay safe, keep shooting, we'll catch you next time. Send it. Hit.